Hey, what's up everybody? Matty Cropper here. <clears throat> I was getting down to the last of my Super Lemon Haze and realized that I hadn't made a Final Harvest video for it yet. So, I wanted to shoot this really quickly before I got rid of this last little bit. There's just under a half pound here. Um, I wanted to discuss the grow, you know, just wrap things up. So, just to talk about uh, the grow, first of all, 8,000 watts, air-cooled hoods, um, fresh air circulation in the room, all super lemon haze plants. I had 44 super lemon haze plants. These are a phenotype that I pulled out of a pack of seeds from Greenhouse Seed Company. So it's Greenhouse's super lemon haze. Um, I did a the gas lantern veg cycle. Uh, throughout the grow, people were asking me, hey, are you still doing the gas lantern? Well, I was like, well, that's kind of just for veg. I guess you could say that Technically, the gas lantern style does the um, 12 hours of light, 5.5 hours of dark, 1 hour of light, 5.5 hours of dark, and then repeats through veg. And then in flower, starts with like 12 hours on, 12 hours off, and then every week or two weeks, you reduce the amount of light every day by... 15 minutes a week or half hour every two weeks so you end up with like 10 or nine and a half hours of light every day and the rest darkness and I did do that this entire grow so I did veg the plants for 21 days with a gas lantern style um, typically I would veg the plants for 14 days with 24 hours of light but because I did the gas lantern they took longer to grow it definitely took longer to grow they weren't any faster in fact, they were actually a lot slower. Um, now, if I would have just flipped the lights on 24 hours a day throughout the entire 21 days of veg, my plants would have had much more developed root systems and would have been much bushier when I flipped them into flower. But because I did the gas lantern, they were not nearly as developed. I would say that I would have, in order to get an equivalent veg, if I wanted to veg 24 hours on for 21 days, so three weeks of veg with 24 hours of light, to get the equivalent growth out of a gas lantern style, I'd say I'd have to veg for at least at least four weeks, if not five. So um, I did that, and then of course I started with 12 on, 12 off, and every two weeks I took 15 minutes off the beginning of the day and 15 minutes off the end of the day, and I think I ended up somewhere around nine and a half, nine and a half hours of light per day. So, moving on, that was a gas lantern. Uh, I tried it, it worked, but it did not exceed or even compare to my regular style of 24 hours of veg. As far as reducing the light cycle throughout flower, I've done that for a long time. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It all depends just how I'm feeling. I try and mix it up. But when I do do that, even with 24 hours of edge, so not a, not a real gas lantern style, but just reducing my light throughout the duration of the flower cycle, um, plants seem to finish off a little faster, but they don't seem to yield as high as when I have 12 on, 12 off throughout the entire flower period. Uh, I haven't documented that entirely, but I've done about 10 grows where I've reduced the light throughout the flower period and I've done a lot more than 10 grows where I've done just 12 on 12 off the entire eight or eight or nine weeks and just it seems like to me that they don't yield as much but they finish off faster when I reduce the day the the light period throughout flower anyway moving on to the grow if you go back and watch the videos you'll notice that after I lollipop the plants I did a pretty uh, non-intrusive lollipop with all the plants so usually I, I cut back a lot when I lollipop you know I take a lot out of there since super lemon haze is kind of finicky and sensitive I didn't do such an aggressive lollipop but I did lollipop the plants and you'll see looking at the canopy just throughout the past few weeks that it's not an even canopy oh well, it's it's pretty even but it's not filled out totally pretty much every plant was contained within the tomato cage you know some plants had a couple colas outside of the tomato cage, but for the most part each plant was contained within the tomato cage which left a lot of holes in the canopy. Basically between all the plants there was space where there could be more colas. 
Now the advantage of having it that, that way is that the light penetrated all the way down and there was no throwaway buds on the plants. Even the lower branches had plenty of light getting to them because the canopy wasn't filled out very much, so everything was a keeper. The disadvantage to having uh, that, that wheat canopy, I'll call it, is that my overall yield wasn't nearly as high as it should have been. This particular phenotype of super lemon haze is already a low yielding phenotype. It doesn't produce very big colas, it produces very dense, beautiful, unique looking colas, but they're not that big and there's not a lot of them on these plants. So where I normally have four to six ounces off one plant, with these super lemon haze I had more like three. My total yield was more than one pound per light, but definitely not a pound and a half per light that I'm used to getting minimum. And I contribute that to the canopy not being filled out so nicely. If I just would have not lollipop these, I would have had definitely a bigger yield, but there would have been some popcorn buds. Or if I would have vegged them a little bit longer and let them fill out more, I would have had a nicer yield. But anyway, the quality of the buds is very nice. Um, let's go ahead and have a look at them here. Obviously dense. Um, this is a one gallon jar and with dense strains I can fit a half a pound into one of these jars. This is about seven and a half ounces. So even another half an ounce I still have plenty of room at the top of the jar here. My White Widow is the same way and Afghan Kush Special also. I can easily fit a half a pound into one of these jars. Other strains like AK-47 or Peanut Butter Kush I mean, you got to pretty much squeeze buds into here, and then you're lucky if you can get a half pound in one of these jars. So that just goes to show you the density of these nugs. I mean, the jar's not even close to full, and there's almost a half a pound in here. Let's have a look at one of the buds. Oh, that one fell. Let's have a look at another bud. set it down here. Okay, let me try and get some good focus. Looks like that's the best we're going to get. Um, uh, you can probably probably tell that, it's, that you can see the crystals. <clears throat> um, really frosty, really unique looking. They definitely look like a, a good sativa, not like a fat round indica bud, but another thing that's unique about these buds they grow really strangely. Let me get a pile out here and see if I can find what I'm talking about. There's basically white, little white tips. Oh, shit, I'm dropping it everywhere. Uh, I guess you can't really tell. But like, uh, it kind of has like a bunch of really mini, tiny, tiny little foxtails. You can't really see it on here. But like right in the center of the screen, right. Oh, there's my finger. Right there. So you see the, the tip of the cola, and then you come down a little bit, and there's this little point right here, right now in the center of the screen, right there. I'm, co I'm covering, covering it up. Now it's exposed. Right there. See that little thing? Those have like white tips. I don't know how that worked. They're, they're, not, the, they're not the little leaves of the bud. They're like uh, little foxtails that just turned white. It's kind of weird looking. It's not bad at all. It looks really cool. But, yeah, this is what the bud looks like. It's very colorful. It's hard. This stuff's actually been curing for quite some time. Um, and there's some better color. You can see the green there. Anyway, yeah, so I got got over a pound per light, but barely. I think I ended up with, well, I'm not going to say my total yield, but you know, uh, not a pound and a half per light, that's for sure. But it's good looking stuff. It's not as potent of a smell as the last time I grew Super Lemon Haze. Actually, the last time I grew it was in my 31 strain flower room, and I just had one Super Lemon Haze plant, and it smelled a lot sweeter than this. This still has a strong lemon smell, but also it smells kind of fuely. It's very unique. It's just, it's not, not as sweet as the last round of Super Lemon Haze, that's for sure. But the smell is equally as good. The smoke is equally as good. Definitely a strong sativa high, buzzy and active. Um, 
I have some oil of this. I should have brought it out and showed it to you guys. It produced really good oil, but it was very low yielding on the oil. I think I got out of the whole 8,000 watts, total yield of oil was less than two ounces. So hardly anything. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap it up and end the grow here. Overall, it was a great grow. Had a lot of fun doing it. I pointed out the fact that the canopy wasn't quite filled out, and I'm going to attribute that to my lower yield. And also probably the gas lantern also contributed to having a lower yield. But all in all, it was a good grow. I don't know when I'll grow Super Lemon Haze again. Possibly soon, probably not 8,000 watts of it, but I, I would like to grow it again and try and get that really sweet smell back like I did in my last Super Lemon Haze grow. But uh, nonetheless, I'm not knocking on the smell of this. It's just not as sweet. It's more lemony and fuely than sweet. Anyway, guys, that's it. Peace.